Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you a DIY for using teacups, things that you have around the house, and supermarket flowers. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a garden full of flowers, or even just a few sprigs, you can use this technique beautifully. The idea is to use fresh flowers in this arrangement. I'll show you some design tips and some little tools that make it really look professional and make it very enjoyable to complete. It's a process that you can use over and over again and tailor it to different flowers, different holidays, themes, and colors. And I find it really useful. When I worked in my father's restaurant, we made lots of similar arrangements with flowers from the garden or fresh flowers from the farm. They're not really time consuming, but they do pack a little punch and it's always pleasant to see fresh flowers in your environment. So let me just show you how I do it. So I created a shorts video where I made this beautiful teacup arrangement. I love working in teacups, particularly the really quirky ones. Sometimes I get them from liquor companies or I'll find them at thrift stores. They're just always so interesting. The patterns and colors are beautiful. And then there are other times I like to work with the very delicate ones. It really depends on the occasion or my mood. Today I'm going to show you the procedure that I use to make the sunflower arrangement in the small Sambuca teacup, which I think is so quirky and fun. The hand-painted ceramic looks beautiful. But we're going to use this one today. It's a beautiful gold and white. It's got a little skin tone here, a little flesh tone peach, which I think is beautiful, deep peach. I like to use any supermarket flowers that look nice. Unless I'm going for a specific color, I'll just buy whichever ones look the freshest. And I love this combination of the pink and the purple. And I thought the pink roses here were beautiful. They're very small roses, like little tea roses. And that color kind of complements that beige tone. So to get started, I like to keep my flowers in water. In fact, when I come home from the grocery store, the first thing I do before I clip them or anything is just stick them in a vase of water or a bowl. I'll set those aside for now. I have some reindeer moss. This is just very soft moss. It comes in lots of colors. This is a little brighter than most times, but that's okay because it's just used as a filler. I'm not using it as a particular focus spot or anything, and that green will work just fine. It's very soft and squishy, and it's completely optional. It's not required. I do think it fills out the arrangement. Now, I like to use flower frogs. These are very old school. They're metal, they come in different shapes. This one is metal with spikes, and it's very heavy. And it's designed that way for a reason. This one is just acrylic, and sometimes they're made out of glass as well. It's a little different, as you can see, but the premise is the same. You can stick your flower stems through here and it holds it. Now this frog is too large for this teacup. It would work for a larger vase or a bowl. And this one is a little small, so I could always use two in here, which is what I think I'll do. But I wanted to show you some alternatives if you don't have a flower frog and you don't really want to buy one. So one thing you can do is take some tape. This happens to be washi tape and I wanted it to be thin, but you can use scotch tape, masking tape, any tape you want. And you're just going to take the tape and pull it across the top of your teacup and make a grid pattern. And you just tear it and really hold it down well. You can do as many or as few as you want. You can leave the spacing, whatever you want. If you want it spaced tightly together or just a little bit apart. And I like it spaced oh, a quarter inch or so for this particular size cup. There's not a lot of depth here in this cup, so I have to create a way that the flowers will really stay up themselves. So I go all the way across, again holding that tape nice and taut, then I'll make some strips perpendicular. So here I have a nice grid on the top of my teacup, and I do have um, the tape showing. So from here, I could fill this with water, and then I can just put my stems in. But I want to show you how I use the flower frog. So I'll remove the tape so we can use the flower frogs, and I'll show you the process there. After I have the flower frogs inserted, it's the same procedure. We're just using a grid that we made instead of poking the stems into the frog. So now to use the flower frog, 
like I said, it's a little heavy weight, which is designed so it doesn't move around in your cup, but sometimes it really moves anyway. And in this case, because I'm using two, just to keep my arrangement neat, I'm gonna to choose to use some floral clay. This step is optional. It's a plasticine clay. It is temporary. The hold is very temporary and it's not permanent. So it's kind of neat that way. I just like to massage it a little bit to get it pliable. And then I take a little bit of it, not so much that it really changes the height of the frog, but enough so that it'll stick to the bottom and then it adheres to wherever I'm putting it, right on that teacup, and it tends not to move around. And it's waterproof. So now I have my frogs in place, and as you can see, they don't spill out. The floral clay can be reused, although it does pick up all sorts of dirt and debris. So keep that in mind. You may or may not want to reuse it. Just use your judgment. To prevent it from drying out though, I like to put it in a Ziploc bag, or perhaps even two. You can always find another way, a container, if you don't want to use the Ziploc bag. And then I just get rid of all the air. So that's how I use the floral clay. Now the floral clay is neat because if you have a jar or a vase that you really like that's developed a crack or a chip and it won't hold water, you can just take a little bit of this clay and smear it in that hole and it'll prevent it from leaking. So that's one way to extend your pieces. And this floral clay, when wrapped properly, will last a very long time. So now I have my frogs inside my teacup. And as you can see, there's some area here and here that don't have the frogs. Ideally, if I had a third frog this size, I'd put three in this cup, but I'm gonna make this work. I like to add a little bit of water to my base right now. Maybe halfway up the cup, I can always add more later. And now I'll take my flowers and work on arranging them. Now I'm not a professional flower arranger, so they might have different tips. However, I have arranged many hundreds of arrangements through the years from very basic to a little more elaborate. I'm sure there are people who do it far better than I do, but I find that my method works well enough for me. I tend to stick to three colors, lots of textures, but three colors. So here I have my pink, white, and green. And as you can see in my green, I have quite a little variation here. I've got these little, um, what would almost look like rose hips maybe, and some green leaves. And then there's obviously the green on the leaves of the rose. And then I have white baby's breath. So I've got my pink, green, and white. Now what I like to do is I take the height of my vase and I like my flower to be about three times that height. Again, you can vary this depending on the type of container you use. In this case, the teacup's really shallow. So I might go a little higher than three. But when I go three, I like to form a dome. Now that dome doesn't have to be a perfect dome. There can be spots of air pockets and see-through through it. But for the most part, I start with a dome and I choose my highest point first. And that's gonna be my roses here. I have two stems of roses one with three and one with two. So I'll start with a larger stem. Now it's a little taller, just slightly taller than what I want the overall height to be. So I'll just clip it off. And I have these beautiful stainless steel clippers. And then I'll just put this anywhere in my arrangement that I want. I'm kind of working towards the center and I'm pushing this rose stem deep into the frog. And now from here, I'll build up my arrangement around it. Some people like to remove all the leaves on the plant. And for the most part I do too, but for my first stem, since that's gonna be my major focal point or my height, my guide for that, I'll just leave that in place. And then from here, I'll just play around. I'll go to my next stem here and I'll just stick that in however I want it. Now this is not gonna be a symmetrical arrangement. So I'll just stick my stems in exactly where I want them to go. And now I'm gonna to go to my next big color, which would be these beautiful rose hips. I want them to be a little shorter than my rose. So I'll come in here and place them. And I just continue going around, adding them throughout my design. It's a lot of trial and error, finding the right placement and shape.
then I'll just continue. I'm constantly looking for balance. So if my stem is too long, I'll remove the leaves closest to the bottom of the stem. I don't want the leaves submerged. And I'll twirl my cup around just to find exactly where I want these to be. So now I have the majority of my piece finished. I want to fill it in with some of this beautiful baby's breath. It's just a light and airy little flower. And I like to move it around. It's a nice filler and it's very interesting. It's a different texture than what we have so far. So I'll just continue adding this around. So now when I'm happy with the way my arrangement looks, it's still very open and airy. So what I want to do now is take that reindeer moss and I just want to fill in the bottom of it. So I can pull this apart and just wedge it in there. And it does a beautiful job of holding the arrangement up in place as well as hiding any of the sins of where the flowers show on the frog. And you can add as much or as few of this as you like. And you can find this in different colors as well. I'll just put my saucer underneath it and I'm ready to display it on my table. It's a very simple arrangement, but I really like the way it came out. One thing to note is when you're done with your tools, you wanna to just wipe them down, spray a little cloth with alcohol, wipe the blade, and once it's dry, make sure you wait till it's dry, then you can put it away. You'll also wanna make sure that if you use the floral clay, it's sealed in a bag thoroughly. So that's how I transform a simple supermarket bouquet into a beautiful arrangement to keep in my home. I use teacups, but you can use mugs or any vessel. A small little vessel works beautifully for this technique, and it's a little unexpected to see that as the container. I have a shorts for this video using the same technique in different flowers, and I'll link that below. It's just a quick way to get the rundown of the entire long video. Thanks for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And if you'd like more content, please consider becoming a member of my channel. I'll include that link below. Thanks for joining me today.